Jeremiah's prophecy of 70 years is important because it connects to other end times prophecies in the Bible that tell us when the evil will end and God will return. It's explained in Jeremiah chapters 25 and 29. In chapter 25 verse 1 it says this prophecy came to Jeremiah in the fourth year of King Jehoiakim. Jehoiakim became king of Judah in 608 BC, so his third year would have been 606 BC. This means Jeremiah received the prophecy of 70 years in 606 BC, which it says is the same year Nebuchadnezzar became king of Babylon. This was the start of the biblical timeline explained later in the book of Daniel. Verses 1 and 2 also explain that this prophecy concerns the people of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And in verses 3 through 7, he's basically talking about how the people of Judah are not listening to him. The Lord sent them prophets, but they did not listen to them. Then in verses 8 through 9, the Lord says, Because they have not listened, all the families of the north and the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, will come against them and against all the nations round about and utterly destroy them. Then verses 11 and 12 go into the prophecy of the 70 years. It says that the nations around Jerusalem will serve the king of Babylon for 70 years, and when those 70 years are accomplished, the Lord will punish the king of Babylon. Then verses 13 through 16 explain that it's not just the nations around Judah who will serve the king of Babylon, but many nations and great kings will serve themselves of them also. So this is important because that phrase, serve themselves of them, implies that many nations will be a part of Babylon when this occurs. Then verses 17 through 26 tell us which nations this refers to, but verse 26 is the most important here because it makes clear that it's all the kingdoms of the world which are upon the face of the earth that are going to suffer the wrath. So this confirms two important things about the 70-year prophecy. First, many nations throughout the world will be a part of Babylon when these 70 years occur. And second, the punishment by God at the end of that 70 years will cover the whole earth. This is confirmed again in verses 29 and 30. I will call for a sword upon all the inhabitants of the earth. The Lord shall roar against all the inhabitants of the earth. And verses 31 through 33, a noise will come to the ends of the earth. The Lord will plead with all flesh. A great whirlwind will be raised up from the coasts of the earth, and the slain at that day will be from one end of the earth to the other end of the earth. So chapter 25 tells us first, in verses 8 and 9, that Nebuchadnezzar will destroy the nations around Jerusalem, and that did happen, it's historical record, and it started at the time Jeremiah was given this prophecy. However, the rest of the prophecy in chapter 25 does not mention Nebuchadnezzar by name. Instead, it refers simply to the king of Babylon. This is very important because it is actually referring to the king of Babylon the Great in the future. We know this prophecy does not refer to ancient Babylon for several reasons. First, 84 years after the prophecy was given in 522 BC, the prophet Daniel wrote that the 70 years of Jeremiah had passed and the fulfillment of the prophecy had not occurred. In Daniel chapter 9 verse 1, he says that in the first year of Darius, he looked at the number of the years and Jeremiah's prophecy of 70 years and he prayed in sackcloth and ashes and repented to the Lord because he thought the fulfillment didn't happen because of their sins. He says in verse 7 that they were confused at the time and the inhabitants of Jerusalem were still far off into all the countries they were driven into. This is a reference to Jeremiah's prophecy in chapter 29, verses 10 through 14, where the Lord tells Jeremiah that after 70 years are accomplished at Babylon, they will call upon the Lord and the Lord will answer. And particularly in verse 14, it says they will be gathered from all nations and returned to their home. So Daniel believed at the time that they would be returned 70 years after Nebuchadnezzar invaded, but instead it was only a fulfillment of the prayer. Okay, so let's look at the 70-year prophecy in chapter 29 so we can understand this in context. It says in verse 1 that chapter 29 contains the words from a letter that Jeremiah sent to all those who had been led away captive to Babylon. It says the Lord commands them to build their houses, plant gardens, get married, have children and grandchildren, and not listen to the prophets in Babylon because they were telling them to not listen to Jeremiah. 
And in verses 10 through 14, the Lord tells them, After 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. In other words, the Lord will send them words about how and when they will return. I will perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. So, words about how and when they will return. Then it says, then you shall call upon me and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Then it says, they will seek the Lord, then find the Lord, and when they find the Lord, they will then be gathered from all nations and brought back into the place where they were taken captive. Then the rest of the chapter talks about the Babylonian prophets, who it says will be removed to all the kingdoms of the earth and punished or killed for their lies. So this is basically a timeline. First, they will be in captivity in Babylon for 70 years. Then after that, the Lord will send them words about the return. Then they will pray to the Lord and be answered. Then they will seek the Lord, then find the Lord, and then the return will happen. So, 84 years later, Daniel interpreted this to mean that the captives would return after 70 years. However, it doesn't actually say that. It says, after 70 years in Babylon, they will be given words about the return, and they will pray and be answered. And this is what actually happened after the first 70 years in ancient Babylon. Daniel prayed and was given the prophecy of 70 weeks in chapter 9, which gives more clues about when the return will happen. The seeking of the Lord, finding of the Lord, and the actual return happen far in the future. And with regards to the 70 years specifically, the Jeremiah 29 70 year period occurred in ancient Babylon, and the chapter 25 70 year period occurs far in the future, in the end time where we are now. We know this for several reasons. First, as we saw before, we're told that when Babylon falls, there will be many nations all over the world serving Babylon at that time, and the dead will be all over the earth when Babylon falls. This is explained later in the books of Daniel and Revelation. Babylon becomes Babylon the Great in the end time. Revelation 17, 3-5 says it sits on the beast, and Daniel 7, 23 says this beast will devour the whole earth. So if Babylon sits on the beast and the beast covers the whole earth, then Babylon sits on the whole earth. It's the great city where the two billion Christians walk, but this is explained in another video. The 70-year prophecy in Jeremiah 25 of the destruction of Babylon refers not to ancient Babylon, but to the fall of Babylon the Great. We can see the parallels between Babylon and Jeremiah and Babylon the Great in the book of Revelation. For example, Jeremiah 25.10 says the bride and bridegroom will be taken away after the 70 years when Babylon is punished, and Revelation 18.23 confirms the bride and bridegroom will be gone at the fall of Babylon the Great. Jeremiah 25.10 also makes a brief reference to the sound of the millstone, and Revelation 18.21 tells us Babylon the Great will be destroyed by a great millstone that will be thrown down from heaven and hit the sea. This explains why Jeremiah 51.42 says Babylon will be covered with waves when it falls. In Jeremiah 25.15, it talks about the fall of Babylon being like drinking a wine cup of fury. This is the wine cup of wrath that destroys Babylon in Revelation 14, 10, 16, 19, and 18, 3. It's also referred to as the treading of grapes in Jeremiah 25, 30, and the harvest in Jeremiah 50, 16. This is confirmed in Revelation 14, 15, and 18. The harvest of grapes is the fall of Babylon. And finally, in Jeremiah 25, 33, we're told clearly that the dead will cover the whole earth when Babylon falls, and this is because Babylon itself will cover the whole earth at that time. In Revelation 17, 18, it says Babylon will reign over the kings of the earth. And in verses 8 through 11, it presents a riddle that must be solved to determine who or what specifically Babylon the Great will sit on. The eighth king riddle is explained in the beast video linked in the upper right corner. In short, the eighth king is the United Nations, which rose in 1945. This means that Babylon the Great cannot exist until after 1945, which means Jeremiah's 70 years cannot occur until after 1945. The only clues were given about this time period in Jeremiah 25 
is that the nations around Jerusalem will serve the king of Babylon during that 70 years, and many other nations of the earth will also be serving the king of Babylon at that time. We know that is the current state of the world. 193 nations are active members of the UN and have signed the Worldwide Peace Treaty. This leads into the second part of the prophecy in Daniel, which we'll look at next. But for now, it's important to be aware that Jeremiah's 70 years in chapter 25 could not have started until after the rise of the eighth king, who is the beast of Revelation 17, and most likely the king of Babylon in Jeremiah 25 after Nebuchadnezzar. So the prophecy in Jeremiah 25 starts when the first king of Babylon takes over, and he's mentioned by name, Nebuchadnezzar, but it ends when the final king of Babylon falls, the eighth king. And this final event that will destroy Babylon the Great, we're told, is an asteroid that will hit the sea, Revelation 18.21. Revelation also explains that when this asteroid hits, there will be a rescue of a huge multitude of people, Revelation 7, 9 through 17, who will be taken to the holy city in heaven, Revelation 21, 2. The earth, however, will be in darkness after this asteroid for a period of three and a half years, during which the beast will continue to rule, Revelation 13, 5. But then the beast, along with Babylon, will finally die, and at that point, God will return to the earth along with everyone who will be taken to the holy city in heaven and they will inhabit the earth together for a thousand years, Revelation 20. So, the return mentioned in Jeremiah 25 refers to God's return with the people who are rescued after the asteroid. This is also confirmed in Deuteronomy 30. It says in verses 3 through 5 that God will return and gather them from all nations and gather them from the outmost parts of heaven. Then it says, from heaven. They will be gathered and then returned. This is extremely important because it's so clear here that the return of Daniel's descendants will not happen until after they have been taken to heaven. And at this point, it's a multitude of all nations that is returning, not just Daniel's descendants. This is very clear in the Bible. A multitude of all nations will be taken to heaven when the asteroid hits, stay for three and a half years in heaven and then return to earth to live with God on the earth for a thousand years. So Jeremiah 29 is giving us that timeline. It says, first, they'll be held captive in Babylon for 70 years. Then they will pray and be answered. That prayer and answer happened with Daniel. Then it says, many nations will become part of Babylon. So this is far in the future at this point. Then they will seek God and find God when they're rescued at the wrath while all those nations of Babylon suffer the wrath on earth. This is the same thing in Jeremiah 25. It starts in ancient Babylon and ends with Babylon the Great and clarifies that the destruction of Babylon will cover the whole earth. The only difference between Jeremiah 25 and 29 is the timing of the 70-year period. The 70 years in Jeremiah 29 occurred at the beginning of the timeline in ancient Babylon, and the 70 years in Jeremiah 25 occur at the end of the timeline in Babylon the Great, where we're living now. The clues we're given about the 70 years of Babylon the Great are that it started sometime after 1945, the rise of the Eighth King, and it involves the serving of the Eighth King by not only the nations around Jerusalem, but also many nations around the entire world. The eighth king created the country of Israel in 1948, and this may refer to the start of the serving of the eighth king of the nations around Jerusalem. And if so, then that 70 years was accomplished in 2018. The prophecy says, after the 70 years are accomplished, Babylon will fall, but it doesn't specify how long after. As of now, in 2021, it has been three years after, but again, We cannot be sure exactly when that serving of the eighth king began. The next clue we have is that the 70 years of Jeremiah 25 end at the same time the great tribulation of 1260 years end. The 1260 years started when those in Judea fled into the wilderness after the abomination of desolation was set up. The abomination of desolation was set up in 685 and the fleeing continued for at least one generation afterward. So the window for the start of the Great Tribulation 
was from 685 to 785, and the window for the end of the Great Tribulation is from 1945 to 2045. So it's interesting that 1945 marked both the opening of the final Jeremiah 70 year window and the closing of the end of the Great Tribulation window. So next week, we'll take a fresh look at the prophecy of 70 weeks given in Daniel 9 that adds on to this timeline. For more information, please go to indigoflower.net. Thank you so much to those of you who make this work possible. Without you, this clarification may have never happened. So on behalf of everyone benefiting from this video, thank you. I hope you're doing well, and I'll talk to you again soon.